All right, so let's have a weird introduction to a weird little project that I started about 10 months ago. Um, this kind of all came together in a weird way, so I'll give you a little backstory, and then we can move forward as if you've seen everything, because I didn't film any of it. Um, it's Labor Day weekend, I'm in some trash studio clothes, cleaning up everything, and, um, but I thought, why not kind of start midway and finish documenting this thing if you guys want to see it. Um, but it's kind of a fun project. So a few years ago, I made a banjo that was a glass tone ring. And so this banjo, it had um, a print inside of it, a woman in a boat. I can put a link in the whatever thing below and, um, and you can see it. But my whole idea from the very beginning was to have a glass tone ring in the banjo. And I tried to cast it out of glass to no success. Um, I went and visited a friend of mine at Center College in Kentucky. Uh, I live in Kentucky. Um, and he blew a glass tone ring for me. Um, and it's a really, really fun project. Um, but I always think about that glass tone ring. And um, I've seen people do ceramic pots for a body of a banjo. And I've made one myself. I made a big old like gourd style ceramic pot, but I'd never made one like this. So I threw, uh, when I was teaching a throwing class, I threw a Ashbourne style pot on a potter's wheel um, out of some black bear, which is a black body clay um, sold through Kentucky Mudworks here in Kentucky and it's super nice. Uh, but anyways, so it has almost like a Dobson style integrated tone ring. So it sounds like glass because it is glass, right? It'll ring really well. Um, and I kind of use it as an experiment, set it aside, cool. Uh, I thought one day I'll put a neck on it. And then I had a gentleman from our local newspaper that wanted to do a feature on me making instruments. And uh, he'd already done one on a good friend of mine, John Reister, doing violins. And I've been making violins and fiddles, and so he said, how about banjos? And I said, yeah, sure, that'd be great. And he said, do you have any on that you're working on? And I was like, no, but I can mock something up. And so. I started in my true fashion and went down a rabbit hole. I started mocking up a banjo so that when they were filming, it would look like I'm actually working on one. And um, it was scraps of stuff, but it was enough to where I thought, you know what, I should probably finish that out someday. So um, I made this neck as a demonstration for their video. And it is a uh, regular old banjo neck with a fun little top shape on the peg head. It has a chipmunk inside. I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but yeah. So it has a uh, redwood, sorry, red heart fingerboard and a carving on the heel that I started that I haven't finished yet. And the carving process, I don't know if I'll document too much of, if you want to see the carving process of a neck like this, I've already documented that pretty well in another one. Um, I can put the link in below. So if you don't see everything here and you want to see how it's done, you can uh, visit that. But, uh, oh, funny thing. So this has, like I said, chipmunks. Let me see if I can get this up close. So I have a chipmunk in there, right? Fun stuff. There we go, chipmunk. And so we have chipmunks in our backyard. We love them. I thought it'd be fun to make a chipmunk banjo. Uh, why not? So, uh, but then I thought about what to put on the heel. So I started putting all of the foods that chipmunks eat. I learned a lot um, when having chipmunks in our backyard that they like to eat flower petals, specific ones. I thought that was super cool. So I have some little flowers in there and some leaves and some nuts and berries and strawberries and corn, et cetera, right? Um, still on the heel cap here, I have my list of things that chipmunks eat as I was doing a little research. So anyhow, um, now normally I, make, I like to make an integrated post. This one is not, it is a two part post. And the main reason I'm doing this is because I have to fit this sucker onto this clay pot which is not regular, right? As it fires, it changes and it's not perfectly smooth. Has some fun little levels to it. So I'm gonna have to map out and juncture that, carve this out. Um, and I wanna be able to do that independently of the post. So, um, what do we have left? We have quite a bit to do, and that's a good problem to have. Um, like I said, I have to mate the surface here to the banjo rim or the pot. Um, I have to finish off cleaning up the post, um, get it ready. I've already got it pre-drilled. Um, and what I'm gonna do is actually just mount a pin through the back here into that post. Um, I need to make hooks and nuts and a tension hoop um, and a flesh hoop. So I have lots of metal work to do as well as some woodworking. 
Um, I was planning on, I thought I had measured it right, but I did not. This would have shrunk down to where a 3 16 inch hook would have gone through, but it shrank a little more than I thought it would have. And so now I need to actually machine some nuts and bolts uh, that are tinier. So um, you get to see me do that. So we'll make some nuts or hooks and, uh, and nuts. We will flatten this out in there. And uh, I'm gonna put a goat skin head on this. And so I already have one picked out that I'm pretty excited about. Um, so I have to shave that. Yeah, we got lots to do. So um, without further ado, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is map out everything I need to cut off here. Uh, it looks like I've done a little bit of that research or kind of layout, but I wanna double check it before I start carving um, and hogging that stuff out. So um, let's zoom in and work on that. All right, you can see how tricky this is gonna be. So even once I have it lined up, where it's gonna sit, I have it justified there. I've already kind of cut the neck angle in. One of the things I do have to determine is if I want, if I do a scoop right here, which I know I wanna do, it's gonna cut through that. So I'll figure out some sort of decorative way to, to mess with that. Just had a good idea. Um, so we're gonna do a scoop all the way down to there. Like that. Okay. And then I need to figure out, I can't really scribe this super well, but I have to figure out where it all needs to go. So I know that that's gonna get cut. Okay. So this will be round one of cutting that out. So where I'm at right now, I have to go up over in that shape like that, cut the scoop, but then also once I cut this in, I'm gonna have to shape it this way. So I'll do most of that by hand. Um, I'm gonna do all this by hand, I feel like. So I might use a Dremel tool or a router tool, or a rotary tool, I mean, um, to get the majority of this meat out and get it curved. So, um, I'll put on my mask and get to grinding that kind of stuff. I'm at a spot where this fits pretty decently, right there. Um, it sits well. It's not perfectly flush, and I don't want it flush right now. I just wanna make sure that it sits okay. And the reason being is, is that I'm gonna start working on the tension hoop, the nuts, and the hooks. Um, I'm gonna do the scoop. I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast, just with a sander, um, belt sander, but, and just refine it by hand, um, but, once I get this all made it up and nice and neat, I'm still gonna have to allow um, some leniency, some space in here for that tension hoop. So before I get this perfectly tailored, I wanna make sure I you know, have some space. So um, to know exactly how much I need, I'm gonna go ahead and do the tension hoop um, and all the rest of the hardware and get this maybe done uh, to when this can, this can function you know, separately. So um, step one, sand a little scoop. Step two, work on the metalwork stuff. And um, as I have a moment here and there, I'm gonna go ahead and carve on this stuff and get the neck further along. But uh, let's go ahead and focus on some metal work. All right, I have a real simple little setup here with a, uh, a ring turner, or I have a slip roll over here, but this one works best for me for these rims, for tension hoops and stuff. And it's just a lot of passes through here, and it will slowly start to bend and go around. So, 
This one's actually set real low right now. We give another little turn here. That's better. Okay. All right, so you can see how that's making an arc. So now I'll just run through it until it fits exactly what I need. A little quarter turn at a time. Now I could do this all at once or a really heavy pass, but I like doing them in lighter passes. It's less stress on the tool, less stress on everything. And it doesn't take too long. Now, one thing I could do in doing this is if I wanted to, this is a 36 inch bar. I just happen to have lying around that's gonna work for me. It should be 32.7 uh, inches. So I'm gonna lose a few inches here. Um, but I could cut it to length, run it, run it, run it. I like to cut it to length just in case I get any flat spots on the end, I'm gonna cut them off anyways. Once I can get it to lap correctly, then I'll actually cut it to the right size and weld it. About there. I'm gonna loosen it up a hair, and that should fit. Nothing magical here, just have my mark right there. I'm just gonna cut it off on a bandsaw, and then uh, we'll remeasure it and make sure we can weld it up in the right spot. All right, now let's go back, make sure it's in the right spot. All right, so tension hoop, cut the size, and that seems to fit. Now, this thing is not exactly circular when it fired. It looks like it warped just a little. Um, so there is a spot that fits better than the others. Um, so I'm gonna make sure that that spot is actually at the tailpiece where I'll put that seam. Um, so I'll adjust it to fit there if I need to. But that should fit just fine. So let's go weld this up and we'll be ready to uh, mark it and grind it for our hooks. All right, with a little bit of cleanup, this is where we're at. Uh, there's the weld. I got a little bit of porosity, a little bit of uh, oxidation on that, but I can either fill it or it's going to be hidden anyways. So uh, this guy slips on nicely, um, fits well, and I know it'll move a little bit once I get hooks on there and stuff. So the next step for the ring is to actually mark where all the hooks are going to go, um, and then I can grind out or cut out where those go. Um, but you probably need to make hooks first. So. Let me mark this out. It's orientation, it won't take but a second. All I'm gonna do is keep my weld over the tailpiece. Cause I know that's where I want it. And then I'm gonna mark everything else with a Sharpie here of where the hooks are gonna go. Now I know some people will say, why didn't you just buy a tension hook? Well, number one, I like to make everything I can. Number two, um, there is no exact size for this because I'm making it as I go along. So I would hate to buy something and then it not fit anything because I kind of measured this as big as I could or best I could. And then once it fired, it shrank more than I thought. So it'll be a cute little banjo. I don't think I own a 10 inch banjo, so this will be fun. And I can play some songs for all the chipmunks. So let's get this thing buttoned up by making all the hooks. <laughs> 